Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Adorama TV's How'd They Do That? Well, on this week's show, we have Rachel LaCour Neeson, and she is a wedding photographer and a businesswoman. So thank you very much for joining us today, Rachel. Thanks, guys. Glad to be here. Well, you've done all kinds of things, and so what I want to do is really start and talk about your photography first. And when we're looking at your photography and reading some of the things that you've written, you really talk about yourself as a storyteller. So can you tell us what that means? Absolutely. I think, um, you know, the term storyteller is used a lot these days. And to me, it, it means a, um, a charge to actually show up at an event that I'm shooting and be mindful of all of the elements of a narrative that come into play, um, introducing main characters, understanding moments of uh, crescendo, understanding moments of closure, all of those visual elements that have to be translated into a total photo story from a wedding day, for example. So um, I always go into a wedding looking for all of the key elements that create a narrative to share with the bride and her family. Well, that's awesome. Well, one of the things that you mentioned through email once, you told me that Kale Alford, who's a well-known photojournalist, is somebody that inspires you. Well, do you approach your weddings as a photojournalist approaches news? Is, there, is that how you go after these uh, stories? It's actually uh, very much how I approach weddings. And I think because my background is actually in photojournalism and I have a degree in photojournalism, I'm certainly um, pre predisposed to approach a wedding as a, a news photographer doing some reporting. And not only that, but you know, revealing a lot of the underlying emotions and relationships that make make the event unique. And so as a photojournalist, I'm always um, willing to throw myself into the chaos of a wedding, much like the chaos of a war zone, for example. And I actually had a mentor who always joked around that weddings and war zones aren't often that different. There's a lot that's similar, minus the bullets. Uh, there's a lot of emotions running high, some chaos, unplanned moments things you have to be very responsive to, but also bring a lot of sensitivity and empathy. Well, what about some of the non-emotional um, kinds of things that you work with, basic technical things? Is there a, a way that you approach the lighting at your weddings? Do you shoot with flash or natural light or a combination of both? Uh, that's a great question. I think um, I'm actually not a highly technical photographer. I am very lucky to be married to a photographer who is highly technical, so we balance each other out very well. However, I think that being um, more accustomed to working with natural light uh, makes me have a sort of a smaller footprint on the event. I go in very quietly and usually try to respond to the ambient light as it exists in the space that I'm photographing. So I'm always looking for window light and watching the way even subtle um, lamp light or uh, pin lights in the ceiling, they reflect off someone's face and uh, trying to really go for um, images that have a feel of, let's say, the Dutch masters, like Vermeer, where there's very soft um, dimensionality. And I think most of the time I find that natural light enables me to do that really well, especially window light. But in situations like a dark uh, reception in a country club, for example, which we shoot a lot of down here in the south, I often have to bounce flash. And so I'm um, really lucky now when I'm using, um, I have a Mark IV that I use and uh, Canon's 580 flash system, I can bounce um, pretty far actually. So even if a wall is, you know, 20 or more feet away, I can still bounce effectively and then uh, just get that um, element of dimensionality, that, that third dimension of depth with shading on their faces. And rarely am I aiming a flash at someone. Usually I'm bouncing it off of something. And sometimes it's even uh, bouncing it off a tree or bouncing it off a column on a building. I'm pretty creative about bouncing so when you're shooting in low light situations a lot of indoor things like receptions and things do you use a really wide uh, open aperture uh, like a, a 1.2 lens or a 50 millimeter um, what kind of lenses are you using in those situations yeah that's a great question I've been trying to use a lot more um, prime lenses lately although if I had to pick um, a reception lens that really enables me to move from the dance floor to 
uh, tables and adapt to any situation, I would actually say that 24 to 70 is my go-to lens for um, reacting quickly to various things happening. So I'll usually uh, have a 24 to 70 uh, 2 8 on hand, and usually I'm shooting it, you know, between you know, 2 8, you know, 3.2, um, and then really uh, allowing myself to take advantage of the Mark IV's high ISO capabilities. So I'm shooting at, you know, ISO anywhere from 800 and above. Um, I usually don't push it, you know, too far past 3200, although I know that uh, many folks do and it looks great. Um, I just enjoy being able to roam around the reception and know that I can react to anything happening with a bit of bounce flash added off a wall and um, you know the 24 to 70 on hand to um, adapt to crazy dance moves and guests chatting at tables. But let's talk about something else. You're really not afraid to use slow shutter speeds in your photos and I know a lot of uh, photographers, are, they shy away from that. Um, you use blur uh, in a lot of your images and it looks really great. Do you have any secrets for us about how you can slow down the shutter, capture more light and still get amazing shots? Yeah, I think, um, you know, one, one area that I struggled with for a long time was uh, being comfortable with experimenting with slower shutter speeds. But at the same time, a wedding is such a fluid um, event. So people are moving quickly and part of that movement is also part of the story. So for me, slowing down my shutter to, you know, 15th, 20th of a second, and then adding a little bit of flash to freeze the moment um, became sort of second nature after a lot of experimentation. And just being confident to say, okay, I've gotten the standard shots that I know I need. I've gotten a great first dance shot and a, you know, cake cutting shot. And then using the rest of the evening to really experiment with the dance floor and with movement um, enabled me to take some risks and learn more quickly how using slow shutter speeds and then actually freezing a moment with my flash could create more of a well-rounded story for the client um, and make them really feel like they were there on the dance floor all over again. So I think the key to that for me is you know, making sure that you're taking into consideration um, you know, the ambient light in the room because you want to retain some of the warmth and um, you know, just the, the feeling of a light that's present in the space, but also being willing to, you know, bounce your flash subtly off a wall um, or a column, for example, and then freeze a moment in front of you so that you can then, um, you know, shoot at a 15th or a 20th of a second and get all of that wonderful movement in the background, but freeze your subject in the foreground so that you can really um, get a sharp, sharp moment. Um, you are a co-founder of something called Shoot Q. And tell us a little bit about what ShootQ is and why that's valuable to photographers. Sure. ShootQ is a basically a photographer's left brain. That's the best way to describe it. ShootQ is actually a client relationship manager and a business manager for photographers. It's geared primarily toward wedding and event photographers as well as portrait photographers. So it takes everything from a client's first inquiry with you to the booking process, to scheduling the shoot, sending invoices, following up all the way to the delivery of the final product, whether it be a slideshow or an album or both. So it's a really a all-encompassing business solution that takes a lot of the tedious processes that go into running a photography business and automates them for you. Okay, great. Well, that's a, 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 an amazing application. Is that something that every photographer needs or are these really uh, uh, for professional photographers? Really, what level is ShootQ um, targeted for? That's a great question. Um, ShootQ is targeted toward professional photographers who are running businesses um, anywhere from, you know, five events per year to 500 events per year. And when we say professional photographers, we mean anyone who's deriving you know, a part of their income or the majority of their income from shooting weddings, events, and portraits. And to me, I think the, the importance of a system, whether it be ShootQ or another business management tool, is that you really want to build in your infrastructure as you grow. Well, awesome. Well, there, there's something else you're involved in, and it's called Pictage. Um, what, is the, what, what does Pictage do, and how is that different than ShootQ? That's a great question, too. Pictage is a... Um, basically a photographer's um, client-facing uh, portal. So anything that involves you know, presenting images to clients, selling images, um, marketing your business, a lot of that is done 
um, on the Pictage side of things. So ShuQ handles everything on the front end, and then Pictage picks up where ShuQ leaves off and handles um, a lot of the image delivery uh, portions of your business. All right, well, before we go, there's one important thing that I really want to make sure that we cover because it could really influence uh, a photographer out there, and that's the ShuQ grant. Can you tell us a little bit about what that grant is and how it can help out photographers? The ShuQ grant is something we started a few years ago after realizing that there wasn't um, a fund available to wedding and portrait photographers who were looking to uh, pursue a documentary project. And the idea behind the ShuQ grant is that it awards one photographer $12,000 annually to uh, pursue a project that has um, influence on society in some way, whether it be um, through environmental issues, social issues, economic issues. All right, well, there you have it. It's the Shoot Q Grant, and it's very inspiring. Thank you so much for telling us about that. Well, we know you're a very busy person, so thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Mark. It's been fun being here, and thanks for bearing with me um, as I you know, thought about these answers and also um, just had a chance to share with photographers what um, what inspires me. Well, no, thank you for being here. It's very encouraging and inspiring having you on this show. Well, you can see more of Rachel's work at liqueurphoto.com and you can also visit the Adorama Learning Center where we've posted some of the links about the work that we've talked about today on this show. Well, thanks for joining me this week. I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.